Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Boker tov. Well, soon we can say Chag Shavuot Sameach. So we might as well practice that, practice that, that now. Chag Shavuot Sameach. That is Happy Shavuot, or literally Happy Feast. Here's the Feast of Shavuot, and this is the word for happy. So we can say that as early as this afternoon. Uh, we'll be practicing this morning, but really it starts tonight at sundown. So we're going to go ahead and start with a word of prayer and look at what we've been looking at for the Feast of Shavuot. Some of you know it as Pentecost. And uh, we'll also look at the priestly blessing today and a few other uh, review things. Okay. Avinu Malkinu, our Father and our King, we thank you, Lord God, for blessing us this morning. We thank you for waking up, us up. We thank you for giving us your word, Father, early in the morning will we seek you. And Father, we thank you that we can get our morning manna. But today, we want the show bread. We want, Lord God, the Shabbat bread. We want that bread that the priests would put together and take from the offering of Israel and put it together to make uh, 12 loaves for the nation of Israel. We pray, Lord God, this morning you'd feed us with your word, starting this morning by teaching us Hebrew, the holy tongue. Uh, Lashon HaKodesh, which is the language of Hebrew, Ivrit. We pray, Lord God, that it would not only just be a writing language, but a living language inside of us, one that we can speak and live and apply its principles. Take the Torah that was on tablets of stone and, uh, and inscribe it on our hearts. Holy Spirit, we pray, Ruach HaKodesh, that you would just come in and just fill us, teach us, lead us, guide us this morning, that Yeshua may be glorified. And Father, that you will uh, use that glory, Lord God, to fill the whole earth with your, the knowledge, the glory of the Lord, as the water covers the sea. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. We are getting ready to experience the festival of Shavuot. Some of you know it as Pentecost. And this means the Feast of Weeks. So we've been learning some terms um, that we'll review in a minute. Let's start with our Aleph Bay. If you do happen to have this page here, you can read the Hebrewish, we call it, in the center section. Some of you are more advanced that you know the Hebrew letters. You can do the first form of the letter, which is the 22 consonant letters, um, and uh, follow along in the Hebrew. And then, of course, if you're wanting to know how to pronounce it, there is the transliteration, or you can even view the sound of the letter from the letter that's on the right. Okay, let's start with count of three. One, two, three. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zayn, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, Ein, Pei, Sadi, Kuf, Resh, Shin, Tav, Tov, Me'od. All right, very good. So we're going to do our vowels. Uh, most of you will have the vowels on the other side. And you know A-E-I-O-U are pronounced A-E-I-O-U. Okay, one, two, three. A-E-I-O-U. Try that again. A-E-I-O-U. One last time. A-E-I-O-U. So if you're looking at your chart, the A ah sounds, some of the sounds that you will see, if, if I give you this, what length is that ah sound? Long. Long. So we start with long, we go to this sound, what's that length? Medium. Medium. And then, what's our short sound? Okay. So, basically, when you see the Shabbat, it shortens anything. It can be a short S sound by itself. But for the A sound, which is usually lines, if you see a T formation where it looks like a hyphen, that's going to be an A, either long or medium. And then the shortage form looks like this with the Shabbat, looking at Hatef, which is reducing the sound from long to medium to now short. Okay? We also have sometimes a vowel can be reduced, even shorter than short. Okay? Uh, if I have multiple dots, like starting with this one, 
Eh? Yeah. Think of the eggs, right? That it looks like multiple of eggs. It's in a downward triangle. Notice that. The medium length will look like two dots side by side. Say right. And then we have so it's a gold. Uh, oh, excuse me. Did it wrong? Did I did that? Yes. Yeah, good thing you uh, caught my quiz. No, it's good. <laughs> good test. Yeah, good test. Okay. So here we have long, we have medium, and then to shorten even more, we're going to add that Shiva again. So here's the Shiva here. Yep. We're going to add, uh, do the, the Sagol shape, three dots in the downward triangle. And then notice that we have a Shiva next to it. So notice Shiva is at the, the uh, is the last E sound here. So if you look in the E type vowel, Shiva is here. That's two. It uh, looks like a, a colon underneath the letter. Because when we look at Hebrew, the, the, there's 22 consonant letters, but where do we look for the vowel to be? Underneath. underneath. So the example you see on your chart is an Aleph, which is the first letter in Hebrew. How do you pronounce it? Oh. Aleph. What does it sound like in Greek? Alpha. Alpha, okay? So, here we have Olive. It's a silent letter without the vowel marking, so I can actually add any sound I want. That would make it an I, this would make it an E, this would make it an A. Okay? So I look for the vowel underneath the letter. So, to be able to sound Hebrew, we start one consonant at a time. A consonant plus a vowel equals a syllable. In this case, it's open. So, we use the example often for shalom, which would look like this, which is what? Sha. Sha. So this letter sheen gives me the SH sound, sheen. So I start with S, H, and then I look for the vowel underneath, and it gives me what? Sha. Awesome. So now I have sha, okay? The next part of the word for shalom is a lamet, a vav with a dot on top, and a mem in its final form called sofit. And so now I have a consonant plus a vowel plus a consonant. This is a closed syllable. Okay? A closed syllable. Okay? So now we have the lamet, which is an L. The vav with the dot on the top, we will find out that that's like that bird in the air that we always say, oh, look at that bird in the air. Dot on top will give me an O. And then mem, which normally looks like this will be in the final form called mem sofit, looking like a little box, and that'll give me the final M. So this word is what? Shalom. Okay? Now, so the breakdown in syllables, you have an open syllable here, sha, your mouth stays open, and lom. The closing consonant is what gives it a, it makes it a closed syllable. Okay? Shalom. Okay? So now, if we go from the a sound, a vowel equaling a, and the e vowel equaling e. So we have a, e, like in Spanish, a, e, e, o, u. We would now f finalize the, the e sound with the schwa, and then we're going to go to the i. And this is pronounced e. In all Spanish, Mediterranean languages, Middle Eastern languages, it's pronounced e. So you're going to have one dot. Follow by you, or you'll have one dot underneath. That's the E sound. So one dot under a letter is like the dot on an I. So if I had an olive with one dot underneath, how do I pronounce that letter? It's silent without the dot. E. e. Okay? So if I take that letter, add mem and another olive, <laughs> and put a patah underneath. Ima. I mean, a uh, kamatz underneath. Ima. It's ima. Very good. Tov mitzvian. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So here you have ima, which is what? Mother. Mother. Ima. How do you say daddy? Abba. Abba. How do you say mommy? Ima. ima. Actually, mother is M. And ima is the nice way to say it. That's how you say mother. So um, if your mom is here, say hi, ima. Say shalom, ima. Your mom's here, so you have to say shalom, Bima. <laughs> All right. So then we move to the the O and the U, which is pronounced O and U, and we're going to use a vav. Okay. We use a vav most of the time. If the dots on the top, we we say, Oh, look at that bird in the air. Let me hear you. 
Oh, oh look at that Bernier. Got the dots on the side, like a woman's purse. Ooh, Ooh look at that nice purse. That's right. <laughs> right, so the other way is to do the um, O sound, and these are not as rare, excuse me, not as common as the dot just by itself. Okay? And uh, the dot by itself, uh, the cholam is going to cholam chazer, which is going to give you a medium length. And then if you have a kamaz underneath the word, every once in a while, this is used for no sound. And it's like I, um, I before E except after C, you just learn a certain rule that certain words, you memorize certain words, the, the, the little T looking symbol called a kamaz underneath is actually an O. So it's only on very rare words like coal, which, you know, um, we could actually spell that with the, the kamaz. Okay? Now, kamaz with the shaba by it is always an O, and it's going to be our shortest O sound. Okay? So basically, really, these are both medium O's. And again, you use this very seldom. And this is the shortest one. If you ever see this, automatically know it's an O. This one's this hard one because you assume it's always an A until you memorize certain words. You just know they're an O because you right. see the word, like, oh, I know that word. Right. That word's an O. Again, I always do this. Okay? Not no. Okay. If I add an E at the end, all of a sudden we go from an A sound to an O. Not a note. So you memorized that, that O. Like my daughter's having the hardest time right now remembering to put that silent E at the end because she just wants to leave words off. And I mean, the words look funny when you leave off that little silent E at the end. I mean, you, but it does change the way things sound. So the same thing with Hebrew. You just learn certain vowels have certain sounds at certain times. And then, of course, we know that we can have the three dots in a downward triangle kubutz, which uh, is uh, a medium length. Okay? Yep. So pretty much that's it. Now, that reviews our vowels, and we've been looking at some um, common phrases for the festival. We have this phrase here, Zaman Matan Toratenu. Say that with me. Zaman Matan Toratenu. Zaman is a season, primarily a set time. Matan means the giving of, or it's basically referring to the term natan or notain, mm -hmm. giver of. So it's the giving of our Torah. Torah. So Torah is instruction, can be translated sometimes incorrectly as law, but the law of Moses or the law of the Lord. But it's really the instruction of Moses or the instruction of the Lord. Torah is usually just with an H at the end. In this case, Torah would be Torah of. So if I say Torah Moshe, what does that mean? Torah, Torah, Torah of Moses. So if we just add Anu at the end, that makes it ours. Because the ending of the word, the suffix, is usually connected to the pronoun. We call that a pronomial suffix. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the word, it will indicate what pronoun is to be implied. So in this mm -hmm. case, Anachnu. Mm -hmm will give us new at the end of all words that have our. So, Torah Tainu is how we say our Torah, okay? How would we say our father? Avinu. So, Av is father. Abba is the short and Aramaic form that means daddy. Avi means my father, so the I at the end is the Yud of Ani. And then Avinu would be the way Yeshua would have taught us to pray, Our Father which art in heaven. Right. Avinu Shabbat Shemayim. Our Father that's in the heavens. Okay? Uh, yes, question? Uh, when Yeshua came into uh, Jerusalem, uh, would they say o Oshana? Is that also? Oshana. That's two, di those two, that's two different words. Hosha referring from the same root as to save as in Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Hosha, okay. Um, Hoshia is another form of the word savior. Um, Hoshienu, our savior, savior, because because it's just like matan and natan. Yeah. The we it's a, a, a root that loses a front letter, 
And so what happens is you can replace it with another, another letter for another form. So, Hoshia is of the same root as Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Or even the full Hebrew, Yehoshua. So, Hoshana means safe. Mm -hmm. uh, Hoshana. Well, um, actually, the na is actually a, a, another word that implies bed. Hosha. Hoshan. Na. Na means now mm. or please. Mm. It's like when someone says, Hosha na, na, when the na is now. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it's a separate word that means now, okay, in Hebrew. And so when they said Hosanna, that's a Latinized, mm -hmm. anglicized form, or anglicized Latinized form of Hosanna, which is save now. So when they said Hosanna to the king, they were saying, save now, king, save now. You're coming into your kingdom. Save us from Rome. Mm -hmm. That was the implication. Save us from bondage. Save us from this exile, if you will. So okay. N A na is not a uh, suffix. I can actually read it to you for Sukkot. It's right here for Sukkot in the Jewish prayer book. Sukkot, here we go. So every day, you'll see here a calendar of days mm -hmm. for Sukkot, for the seven mm -hmm. days. And so here it is in Hebrew. See, most of the time they spell it together, but, um, but it's actually a separate word. Ho. The noon Aleph is Na. Hoshia Na, Hoshia Na. So, that means, see right here, they say, please save. Please save for your sake, our God. Please save for your sake, our Creator. Please save for our sake, our Redeemer. Please save for our sake, uh, our attender. So, Hoshia Na um, is the term here in the prayer book for save now. And we, we translate that Hosanna to Hosanna. Hmm. Hosanna. Hmm. Hosanna to the king. It's so funny because someone was telling me, uh, oh, this song in uh, Hosanna, they said, oh, do the Spanish version. And the person goes, Spanish version? It's just Hosanna. So <laughs> Hosanna just becomes Hosanna. And I, I told them, well, before it was Spanish, it was Hebrew. <laughs> and they were shocked. They were like, no, I thought it was a Spanish word. Oh. Like, you know, you can't claim Alleluia. As a Spanish word, it's Hebrew. Even if there's a Spanish way to pronounce um, hallelujah, hallelujah with an A, it's still hallelujah. It's from Hebrew. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. With a shortened form of the name of God, Yudhe So again, this is the way Hebrew works. Now, what I want to actually go through um, as our last thought of the day is I want to help you pray this over your children, your family. Especially during feast days, it's a beautiful day uh, thing to do. And on Shabbat, is uh, primarily, especially the father of the home who lays his hands on his children. I was watching this week a video of the Birkat Hakonim, which is the this prayer here, Birkat Hakonim, which is the priestly prayer of Numbers six, um, number uh, number six, uh, twenty four through twenty six, and we're in the book of Numbers. So actually, it'll show up next week. So I thought it'd be great to show this to you, so you can prepare for next week. But this. Um, this priestly blessing, uh, the one of the rabbis of Israel or the men of Israel will sing it at the Wailing Wall, the Kotel, and he'll sing it almost one word at a time, and people will respond to it in prayer. And so he'll say each word because it's like he wants every word of the prayer to just resonate on the people as he prays it for them to meditate on the meaning of those words. So here is our first introduction to it. We'll look at it again next week, and it's called the priestly blessing. Um, so it says, I, I have the, the card form, you can also have this for yourself as a card form. It's made to put on cardstock, mm -hmm. and uh, from HebrewForChristians.com, and or you might have a long form. Let me borrow someone's long form just so I can compare this. You see here, may the Lord bless and keep you, may the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, may the Lord lift up his face 
to you and give you peace. Um, and actually, even though sometimes we say upon you, it's really towards you. Mm -hmm. His face is shining towards you. Mm -hmm. That's the sign of a good friendship, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Good covenant friendship, face-to-face -face relationship. God speaks with Moses face-to-face -face as a man speaks to his friend. So there are uh, three words to the first line. This would include uh, the prefixes and the suffixes, like pronominal suffix suffixes at the end. So to say a whole sentence, a whole verse in Hebrew, it only takes three words. Mm -hmm. So notice in English we have, the Lord bless you and keep you. In Hebrew, it's Yivarech Acha. Try that. Yivarech Acha. So here we've got, uh, I won't be able to do this whole thing today, we're just going to introduce it today. But the first word is Yud. You have the letter Vait or Vait without the Dagesh or Dot in the center, making it a, taking it from a B sound to a V. Then we have the letter Resh. We have Chaf or um, Chaf's feet. So if we put our vowels in, What does that mean again? This first word is the Lord. Uh, he will uh, may He bless you. Okay, so here we have the youth. Underneath we have a. We're gonna put a apostrophe um, or a to now. I'm calling it an apostrophe, right? Yes. Uh, and then we're going to use that for the short E sound. <clears throat> then we have the letter bait, which in this case would be a V. And we have an A underneath. We have the letter Resh, which is an R. We have an E. We have the CH here. And then we're going to put another little apostrophe in there. And we're going to put another CH. So this implies a short E sound. So. Pronounce the Y with the short E sound. Yeah. Come on, all together. Yeah. What's this sound here? Va. What's this? Re. Now this is going to be a short E right here. He. Ha. 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 Okay, so we end with the final sound here. Yivarechecha. Everybody pronounce that. Yivarechecha. Remember, it's ye, it's not ye. It's ye, because an e is an s sound. Yivarechecha. So here we have an e, a, e, a, I mean e, and then the final a. So e, a, e. E a e e a e a e e a say that e a e e a that's the vowels e a e e a ye va re he ha that's just the first word but in this first word is the youth for he which means he will do this or may he do this as a request and here is the letter bait resh and then we've got the ka in this case. And so this is the same root as Baruch. Mm -hmm. The bait, the rej, add a vowel in there, and we have Baruch. This is how we start all of our blessings with Baruch Ata Adonai. Blessed are you, O Lord. In this case, it's may he bless you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it tells you who the he is when it adds the name God at the end. Or after the yud hey vav hey, when it has the name of God, the tetragrammaton. So we don't say the name of God because we don't really know how to pronounce it correctly, except for the first two letters, Yah. Um, we say when we say Hallelujah or Isaiah, Jeremiah, you hear the name of God. We don't really know how to pronounce it with whether it's one uh, one more vowel to add or two more. So we'd be guessing on all these different ways that you see on the internet. People are guessing. So out of respect, we say Adonai, Lord, and that's what our English does. All capital, L-O-R-D, Lord. But know that every time you see all capitals for Lord, 
you know it's the name of God there. So we respectfully say Hashem, the name, or Adonai as respect. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is the Jude at the beginning always implied with this uh, third person, uh, future tense? Actually, remember you have that right in your notes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have a whole section. If you have the full set, some of the new people, you don't have this today. Yeah. But we see that for verb conjugation, the you implies a third person. He, it can also be used for they, but you know, most of the time, the, the, the name given afterwards, whether it's Moshe or Abinai, is going to give you the singular or plural indication. So it could be used for he or they, and it's third person future tense. So it, it's, in other words, he will do something, that he will bless you. So we refer to that in English, may he bless you. It's the implication that he will, but that he may. Mm -hmm. You know, may I have a cup of water? Well, you know, you're asking politely, but really it's the fact he will do it because he intends to bless you. He wants to bless you. Amen. Okay? So yes, it does imply he, a third person future tense. Oh. And it can be used for the plural, but the moment you use the name of God, we know we're not talking about three people. So, not to confuse that with Trinitarian structures of beliefs of the triunity of God, but in the name Yudhid Vavhe, there's no three. It's not plural. It's a singular name. Mm -hmm. It's a he. Oh. So it always should be translated he, never um, they. I hear people say stuff like that all the time. They, you know, you're referring to God as a they? <laughs> I mean, I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to in, in include the Christian understanding of the unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But that really messes things up hebraically, mm -hmm. and it messes up a lot of Jewish people to understand what anything, or of anything of relating to Yeshua, when we confuse the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. We should never confuse the lines of understanding. Mm -hmm. Keep them in their proper understanding. Mm -hmm. When it's time to talk about unity, or talk about um, plurality, that's fine. We talk about it in its areas. But don't just drag it into every word. When you see Elohim, don't say, well, Elohim, you know, and... Most pastors do it, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, then why would we need to say Spirit of Elohim then? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Trinity? No. It, it doesn't apply that way. Elohim is a plural of majesty. The way the word heavens, God is seated in heaven, but the plural, the word is plural. Mm -hmm. Now you say, well, it could refer to the three heavens. Well, that is true. It could refer to the three heavens. But where God is, he's not necessarily, you know, saying, I'm over here and I'm over there. No, he's in heaven, which implies that which is above the waters, that which is up, you know, where God is. And so I think it's important for us to realize that the Hebrew has a structure and we need to allow it. We don't change languages to fit our doctrine. We allow the language to speak for itself. And where we have revelations and understandings and oh, I got insight on this. Oh great, keep that as your insight, your revelation. But don't try to make a language say more than what it was intended to say as a language. Because you destroy the language. Yes. Right. It would be like someone who doesn't speak English come into English and say, well I'm going to start creating you know, concepts in English, what I think it means, from their language into ours. It doesn't work that way. We might have a one-on-one -on -one translation or transliteration, mm -hmm. but our language works differently than yours. Hieroglyphics works differently than English. No. You can't make it be English. No. It has a different function, you know, a different look altogether. You, be, you can translate, but you can't make it. There's many words that you will not be able to translate from one language to another. No, that's true. Yeah. So we need to leave the purity of the language as a pure, holy tongue. Okay? Rabbi, uh, I don't know, but it, among the Hispanics, they like to use the word Dios. Right, like with the Dios, yeah. Right. It's it's and, it's Greek. Right. It's a Greek based word, Theos. Yeah. And it, in Latin it becomes Dios, or in Italian so you say Dio. When I'm talking to them, I say Dio, mean one God, plural. And no, 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 no. The S at the end though is not a plurality. No, but but in any in any possible way, whether in Greek, Latin, or otherwise. The S is not used as a plurality for Theos. No, no I, I, I don't, but when I'm talking to him, I don't use the S. Because I say it's only one God. I say a Dio. No, it's Dios. You know, like they kind of make more than yeah, one God. Yeah, but, uh, but see, I, and then, but see, Spanish doesn't even work that way. I know, but. Because you'd have to say Dioses. Yeah, it would never, Dios with, with an S, 
would never imply plurality ever. No, I know that. So I, I, I think you would be actually ruining the language yeah. to even say Dio. Unless you're now talking Italian, because in Italian it's Dio with no S. Right. That's it's just yeah, because in every language we have certain ways to end words. Yeah. We just got to know that. Like most of the Hebrew languages, uh, 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 Hebrew language in Aramaic, you add an extra olive at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dio is green. Shemaya, for instance, is Shemayam. But Shemaya. 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 You, you hear it in the, oh. in the, the uh, mourner's Kaddish or in the Kaddish. Yeah. It's mostly an Aramaic prayer. Most Jewish uh, ketubas are in Aramaic. It's enough Hebrew for a Jew to understand, but it has Aramaic endings of the words because it's the language they learn in between, mm -hmm. between the oh. speaking pre pure Hebrew and Babylonian yeah. Aramaic. Yeah. They have it. It's no different from a person who speaks Spanish who's from Spain, but they come here and learn Spanglish. Because that's what people here are speaking because they heard English and they had to mix the two. Okay, mm -hmm. Droca and, and, and um, Marqueta, they're not real words. Yeah, no. It's Mercado and Camion. You can't make up words, but we do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and guess what? Believers in Yeshua did too when it came to Greek. Mm -hmm. They did all the time. And guess what? English speaking believers in Yeshua did the same thing when they mm -hmm. took words like baptisma or baptismos mm -hmm. or baptizo, the verb. And they took baptismos and they said baptism. Right. Well, to a Jew, it doesn't make any sense. Baptism, what's that? Oh, immersion in water. Oh, okay, I understand. And you take the word in Greek back to its origin, it means to immerse in water. Right. right. So we take it back to its root, it has meaning. You take Jesus back to its root, Joshua and Jesus are the same name, Yeshua in Aramaic, mm -hmm. Yehoshua in, yeah. in Hebrew. So yeah. when we see the fullness of the name, you see the, the name, the two letters for the name of God, Yah. Mm -hmm. So everything makes sense that Yah say. In, in English, you ask somebody what Jesus means, they're like, I don't know. You know why you don't know? Because you've lost the roots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you go back to the roots, the root of the Hebrew language tells you, okay, there's two root words here. Mm -hmm. There's the name of God, and there's, here's Hoshua. Remember Hoshia? Mm -hmm. It means salvation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the root Yasha, to save. Yeah. So what's Dio? Is that, um... Dio is Italian for God. Dios is Spanish for God. Yeah. Yeah. Theos is Greek for God. That's where we get theology from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Theos. Okay? All right, let's close in prayer. Avinu Malkin, our Father, our King, we thank you that as we prepare for Shavuot and we hear from the mountaintop the ten words that Aserat Hadi wrote, we pray, Lord God, that those ten commandments would not be written on stone today, but you take the old stony heart out and give us a heart of flesh again, that you could write it on fleshly tablets of our heart through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, Ruach Elohim, Spirit of God, Come now and reveal Messiah in and through us, that we may lift him up. And if he be lifted up, he will draw all men unto you, Father, both Jew and Gentile alike. Let the Jewish person that comes in our synagogue embrace the concept that Messiah is Yeshua HaMashiach. And also let our, our Gentile, non-Jewish believers come in or even non-believers come in and embrace their Jewish roots in Messiah. Mm -hmm. Father, Lord God, that together we will have one Messiah, one Father, one immersion and immerse us all in the same water of the Spirit that we can come out speaking in the same language, the language of Ivrit, the language of your Torah, the language of heaven, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you. May the Lord grant you His peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you And make His face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you May the Lord grant you His peace Yeah, I don't know, but I'm a little bit